Okay, this is um, my review for the Witchfinders, um, the recent episode for Doctor Who. Uh, overall thoughts of the episode. I had high hopes for this episode with the um, whole historical factor of this episode. The last two historical episodes of Doctor Who were quite well done. This one to me felt more forgettable than it did anything else. The two characters I thought that stood out the most in this story were... Graham, yet again, obviously, and uh, Alan Cumming playing King James, which I thought he was just brilliant. Why hasn't he been Doctor Who before? Perfect character actor, obviously. Um, I wish there was a bit more to the whole uh, witch trials and whatnot. I mean, yeah, we saw elements, we saw Duncan's, we saw... Um, I, I believe people being put on trial for being witches and whatnot, but it just didn't really feel much like an episode uh, that feels like they took more elements from a couple of Doctor Who audio uh, books or audio play uh, books that were recently released with um, the, those mud men from World War One and I, I think it was World War Two too who were dealt with with the first and the third Doctors if I remember correctly where um, <clears throat> the uh, recently fallen, um, well, recently killed soldiers have been possessed by this mud which ha uh, was trying to correct the timeline. Um, th that's what it felt like with these women who were recently killed and just uh, either buried or dumped into the mud, where the mud is now attacking people because uh, the tree... That they cut down for their dunking stool was um, part of the alien spacecraft. I mean, it was a cool idea, but it just felt like it wasn't really executed to the best of its ability. Uh, one thing I did have a fear about when Doc, uh, Jodie became the Doctor, when I found out she was going to be the Doctor, was exactly the situation that we found ourselves in this story where the Doctor is accused of being a witch and is put on trial. Um, why they didn't use the whole respiratory bypass system when she was dunked in the water, you know, she comes back up, they find her unconscious or presumed to be dead, and she comes back alive, you know, mentioning that she's used her respiratory bypass system, why didn't they use that? Um, <clears throat> it just, I don't know, this episode to me felt very middle of the street, like it was trying to please certain people, uh, lots of people at the same time. Um, for the most part, I enjoyed most of the characters, uh, even uh, Becca when she gets possessed as well. I just didn't find the story intriguing enough for me to sit there and actually pay attention. I watched it, I paid as much attention as I could, but it just didn't feel like it was a um, a story that was worthy of it. Uh, I like how at the beginning of the story, though, they mentioned the coronation of Queen Victoria, which obviously Queen Victoria would never suspect the Doctor of being a woman now, but that would that would have been a cool thing to see, I guess, better than this episode. Um, I find it funny, the Doctor tells them in the story, though, uh, not to meddle with history because... The witch trials and whatnot, uh, the historical thing, and that's what they've been doing the last how many stories? Meddling with time and uh, screwing around with everything. <clears throat> um, I just love how, you know, basically uh, touching on the previous point, how the doctor says not to interfere with history, and that we see the dunking of uh, the little girl's mum. Uh, being put on trial as a witch and the first thing the doctor does shrugs off her coat and dives straight in to save the woman which she failed at sadly um, yeah just contradictory elements of the story you know don't do this oh wait a minute I'm going to do that what I just said not to do before so um, it's kind of annoying when they do that you know I get the whole thing, you know, where the Doctor says to the companions, don't wander off, you know, and they end up wandering off, or the Doctor ends up wandering off, well, that's part of the adventure, but to say, I'm not going to interfere, wait a minute, now I am going to interfere, 
um, it's becoming what seems to be the norm now you know I don't want to do I don't want to uh, meddle with time wait a minute hang on this doesn't look right to me even though it's what's meant to happen I'm going to change it anyway so for me I, I just find that quite um, mainstream now for the whole thing <clears throat> I, I like that the part where um, Becca the um, the woman in charge of the the witch trials and whatnot when she's walking along in her red and black dress to me she looked kind of reminded me of the uh, the uh, the Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland you know with her hair pulled up and um, the way she looked and all that just very off with their heads uh, I thought it, that that I thought was a reference to me at least um, what else was there the, the whole thing when the doctor pulls out the psychic paper and convinces Becca that she's now the she's the witch finder general I did think to myself well hang on a second that doesn't seem right a woman being a witch finder general and then later in the episode we find out that King James looks at the psyche paper and sees that he that she's the assistant. And Graham's the king, uh, the uh, witch finder general. Which, again, I had the fear that if she had a manual companion, people would pay more attention to the male companion than the doctor. And it's becoming what I think is a bit of a trend now, uh, where the doctor might say, you know, something with an authoritative voice. And whoever she's talking to would turn straight to Graham and probably talk to him. Um, it's starting to happen a little bit more and more now, I think. And I also find it really, really weird that no one in the story mentions how strange the clothing the people are wearing are, is. Uh, the, the doctor and the, the friends, in quote, air quotes, how their clothes are so strange and different to what uh, everyone else is wearing. No one mentions that. Usually, you know, when they travel to a different time period in previous seasons, they change their clothes sometimes to match the time period. So uh, I don't know why they didn't do that for this one. Um, also, with the doc the doctor mentioning that she does not believe in the devil. Well, remember in Satan's Pit where the tenth Doctor encountered a giant demon or demon-like creature that c believed itself to be the devil so in a way kind of sort of the doctor has met the devil um which i thought <clears throat> was a little bit of a continuity error there personally uh what else was there i was just looking at my notes sorry uh like mm. i also like how uh, king james uh uh confronts the doctor by saying basically you, uh, you know you hide behind the title of doctor there is something that you're hiding which i always thought previous doctors have uh, pulled that off well where someone accused the doctor of hiding whereas jody doesn't feel like she's hiding she like people are going to say i'm bashing because she's a woman i'm not bashing because she's a woman i'm bashing because she, personally to me i don't know if anyone else is this she honestly isn't the right actress for this this role. She just cannot put th forward that little bit of authority of, you know, my foot is down, I have finished speaking, that's the final word. It's more like she's put her foot down, she's said her final word, and whoever she's talking to has just walked off completely ignoring her. That's what it feels like to me. Um, what else is there? Uh, when the mud witches first appeared to me, um, they re they reminded me a bit of the the walls of Fenric, from the Curse of Fenric, where the um, those young women were turned into like uh, undersea vampires, very Lovecraftian looking creatures. To me, they almost looked exactly the same. You know, the bedraggled hair, the long fingernails. It was really really well done. I thought that was a really cool um, pullback to uh, classic Who a bit there. Um, the Morax face that Becker eventually gets is really hard to look at, not because of how good the effects on a, on the face look, it's the fact that the face was undulating constantly in certain areas. You look at it and you go, that is just so 
uneasy to watch. I'm, I, I almost got like motion sickness just looking at the face. Um, I don't know if that was meant to be like it's something under her skin or her skin is just rippling, but to me it just was a very hard to look at uh, scene whenever her her alien Morax face for uh, for Becca came in into shot on screen. And uh, I always, uh, I'm actually quite surprised. This episode wrapped up very quickly. Um, how quick the the whole thing just ended. You know, the the alien threat just seems to show up what three quarters of the way through the episode, and then instantly they've got us. They've got the solution, and they wrap it up within that last quarter of the episode. For the most part. The, the aliens technically didn't really show up. Um, all we saw was what we believe to be natural historical events unfolding. And people are going to say that's the whole um, the whole shock horror twisting of aliens being there and all that. And honestly, yeah, okay, the aliens that being there was a little bit of a, a twist to see. But it was just wrapped up so quickly. If they gave a little sprinkle here and there of... Um, aliens and whatnot being involved just the slightest amount you know it might have given more weight and gravity to how quick the the resolution for the, uh, for the threat was to me it just seemed like okay witches 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 bang aliens roll in credits and it just didn't seem right to me uh it felt very disjointed uh, uh yeah, very middle of the road for me. It just, it, it could have been a brilliant episode if it was nothing but historical, pure historical, you know, they're there to see the events that happen. Um, yeah, I get that, that supposedly this place uh, gets wiped out of the records by King James, uh, the area, and that's why no one from modern history has learned about that event and, the, and what happened there and all that. It's understandable, even the Doctor doesn't know about it, but just to have uh, th- th- this whole situation with the aliens in the last bit of the episode, it just, it, if it was more historical and, you know, the companions get, you know, embroiled into it and the Doctor gets embroiled into it, where they're all accused of being witches and they have got to try and get their way out of it, that to me would have been a better episode rather than than oh no, witch trials, the Doctor is accused of being a witch, oh wait a minute, they're not witches, they're aliens, and so on and so forth. It just could have been so much better. A a good example that comes to mind is, uh, I was watching recently uh, an episode of DC's Legends of Tomorrow, where they had a similar thing with a witch trial, and there were... um, witches and whatnot involved but it wasn't what you thought it to be it was a magical fairy godmother which i thought was a really cool twist of of that instead of being it was like hinted at throughout the entire of the episode whereas with this for doctor who it was all supposedly you know this is heavily witches no 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 hang on a second it's these alien mud creatures uh we've defeated them with a piece of their own ship Roll credits. So, um, I know I'm rambling, but it, this episode, it's really hard to p- pick points of this story that were overly noteworthy to speak about. It was just very, very pedestrian, very middle of the road. Um, gonna have to give it a five out of ten. Um, the, the only reason why is it's a five out of ten is because, like I said, Alan Cumming brilliant actor he played the role awesomely and um the whole uh, graham thing honestly he is literally saving every episode that's really bad so far for me because he's a brilliant actor he seems to be the heart a little bit of this team you know he he gives the the wisdom and the and, and the knowledge to each character of the tardis team or any side characters for those stories uh, that uh, they happen to be in where he, you know, mentions, you know, 
the hardness of life and how you know he keeps going on and so on and so forth honestly he is the heart of the show um i hope he does not die or whatever at, by the end of the series because he is really a good character and um i'm enjoying his um progression for, as a character all the others are sort of stagnated even the doctor is very stagnated um she's just not feeling right to me she has no real personality she just up and down like a um like a roller coaster up and down up and down and i cannot in good faith uh recommend most of this series to anyone i'm personally i won't be buying this series as a box set when it comes out on dvd and uh, I'm quite sad to say that because I, I've been collecting every box set since the uh, series uh, returned. And uh, for me, I know people are going to say, well, you're woman bashing and so on and so forth. No, no, it's not that. She, she isn't the right actress for it. Uh, if they had a different actress for it, uh, like had Dr. Freeman had mentioned, Hayley Atwell, she would have been perfect for this role. Uh, she's got the feistiness, she's got the... The, the acting chops to carry off a character like the Doctor. She did that in a uh, Agent Carter in the TV series. You know, she could uh, take, uh, throw a punch, she could take a punch. She literally is like the female version of Peter Capaldi, just younger and hotter. So, yeah, um, that's my review for the um, for this episode. The, uh, what was it called again? Sorry, that, that that's how... Uh, mediocre for me it was the witch finders which um yeah i'm sorry to say it was not that good of an episode for me all right well thanks for listening to my rambling anyway catch you guys later